So let's take a closer look at the flight test profile. Now, about 26 minutes from now, Super Heavy will ignite its 33 Raptor engines and lift off from Starbase. About three minutes into the flight, Super Heavy's booster will separate from the ship in SpaceX's second ever attempt at a hot stage separation. That means it'll light its engines while still attached to a partially lit booster. The ship's engines will then remain lit for about six minutes during the ascent before entering a coast phase. Next, the booster will perform a flip maneuver and execute a boost back burn, which, if you recall, is where Flight 2 Super Heavy experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly. We're hoping hardware upgrades made for this flight will get the booster closer to executing a landing burn in the Gulf of Mexico. In the meantime, Starship will coast for about 30 minutes at altitudes between 150 and 235 kilometers, and the ship will attempt to fire a single Raptor engine for our first ever relight of a Raptor engine in space. And from there, the ship will head toward its destination, a splashdown location in the Indian Ocean. We expect it'll look something like this animation on your screen with the heat shield tiles facing down. We'll use the Earth's atmosphere to break the vehicle and help then get us into a controllable regime as we go towards splashdown. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, seconds into flight we are feeling the rumble we are seeing 33 out of 33 raptor engines ignited on the super heavy booster booster and ship avionics power and telemetry nominal acquisition of signal corpus christi We're continuing to get good call outs our trajectory Matthew. looking nominal systems looking nominal just amazing to see all 33 lit up once again At this point, we've already passed through max Q, that maximum dynamic pressure, and passing supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound, getting those onboard views from the ship cameras. Now, the, the next major milestone is gonna be a hot staging maneuver. Again, we're gonna be doing that in just about 90 seconds. To do that, we're gonna shut down all but the three center Raptor engines on Super Heavy. That'll be our Miko, our most engines cut off. And then the clamps holding the two stages together are gonna release. Starship second stage will ignite its engines, the RVACs first, the sea levels right after that. The sea level engines will be splayed or just kind of pointed out at about a 15 degree angle so if you look close and we get good tracking you might be able to see those center right after and so those six engines will push starship off of the booster all right counting down now we're going to be coming up right at around the three minute mark on that hot staging maneuver Again, we'll see the booster engines start to shut down. You'll see all but three lights go out in the middle. And then we'll see the engines ignite on ship, pushing it away. And that will start carrying the ship into space. Booster will start to do its flip and then move into the boost back burn, setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Hot staging confirmed. Boosters now making Acquisition its signal. way back, Done. seeing six engines ignited on ship. Kate, we got a Starship on its way to space and a booster on the way back to the Gulf. Oh man, uh, I need a moment to pick my jaw up from the floor because these views are just stunning. Uh, these are live views from Starship. 
Uh, first stage is currently performing. The ship the avionics, power and telemetry nominal. Good there. News informing us that the second stage or the ship, everything looking good, nominal there. First stage is currently performing the boost back burn, expecting that to last about one minute. That boost back burn. Uh, that boost back burn propels the booster back towards the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we're uh, only using the Super Heavy Booster's 13 center engines from here on out. Uh, as Whenever they relight, you'll be able to see that in the left bottom corner. Uh, those are the ones that can gimbal. In other words, they move and change direction uh, in order to change the thrust to steer the first stage back to Earth. Wow, these are just incredible views coming to us. Everything is looking good for both the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen or the super heavy booster, as well as on the right-hand side of your screen, that is Starship, or we also refer to that as the ship. Now the boost back burn uh, was the first of two burns required to return it to Earth. The next one will be the landing burn, where all 13 center engines will initially ignite and then transition into a three engine burn uh, to help slow it down. Now, just as a reminder of the stage one test objectives, uh, we're looking for controlled ascent, which we have so far, uh, stage separation, which gorgeous, we cruised right through it, uh, as well as- on a nominal trajectory. Good news there telling us that the path that Starship is on uh, is good. Now Starship's second stage is still firing its engines and as you heard, following planned flight path, uh, the ship objectives, we're looking for hot staging, again, cruised right through that. We're looking to demonstrate controlled ascent as well as orbital insertion. Now the bottom right-hand corner of the screen shows the ship uh, engine graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on those. Yep, Kate, like this is just a, a phenomenal test so far. Super Heavy is performing beautifully today. It's on its return leg of the journey. Ship continuing to burn its six engines, those larger circles, the Raptor vacuum engines, the inner circles, the uh, Raptor sea level engines. We're ab about 30 seconds away, uh, just under 30 seconds away. From the start of the boost back burn, uh, excuse me, the landing burn on the booster. You can see the grid fins are rotating. Those hypersonic grid fins are guiding us through the atmosphere back towards our splashdown site. Again, we're going for a hard, uh, for a splashdown, a soft splashdown. So for landing burn, we're going to expect to see the 13 center engines light rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, and then just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. And acquisition of signal. Let's we'll see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Um, and to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled re-entry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship continuing to look nominal with its ascent burn. This burn lasting uh, about six minutes total. And we're expecting that this burn will end uh, just after T plus eight minutes, about a minute from now. So far though, I mean, congrats to the team. Making it this far is farther than, we, than we've gone Absolutely. on flight two. Just wonderful views and great engine performance from the vehicles. Oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are still- brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks <laughs> are still communicating. 
and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note, with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah. Again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat chill tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed. But you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed down uh, so they can absorb the heat of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and so that's the purpose that they are serving during the hypersonic phase and then again during the subsonic phase. Absolutely.